What's going on guys, Jesse here back to my channel, and tonight I'll be doing a review for uh, AEW Dynamite and stuff, so let's go ahead and get to it then. Um, MJF kicks off the sh this week's show, uh, finally. Um, so yeah, MJF is back. As advertised, the former longest reigning AEW World Champion of all time makes his way out to make his AEW Dynamite return in this week's opening segment. He sells inside the ring and says, cut my music, cut my music. The fans chant, he's our scumbag. Um, MJF talks into the camera and says if his, oh shit, uh, sorry guys, if his eyes look bloodshot and red, maybe we didn't get the memo that MJF is in Colorado tonight, baby. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Um, about a ton of people making bald claims on his show while he was out of action. He brings up Kajushka, uh, uh, Okada calling him, calling himself the Rainmaker. He says he's making a lot of money. But based on his body, he doesn't seem to have a gym membership. <laughs> oh, it's fucked up. Um, Maxwell Jacob Freeman talks about his post uh, leader swerving around and referring to himself as a business mongol. He says the last time he checked, business mongols go to business school. And if y'all didn't, um, I guess you skipped your public speaking course. He brings up Will Ospreay saying, Oi, I'm the best in the world, bruv. <laughs> they fans chant bruv bruv and mjf quips it's a great word it is it's a badass word <laughs> it's an awesome word um uh freeman tells osprey the last he chat he ain't chris jericho kenny omega am cole hiroshi uh tanahashi brian danielson john moxie and many others he says but do you know who beat everyone on, the, on that list mjf M mjf he says, um, the next time you come on his show, and lie with his bridge di discussing teeth, watch your mouth. Because, silly Billy, you ain't the best in the world, bruv. I am. Alright. Um, he talks... Sorry. Um, he talks about creating matches and moments that will stand the test of time. And went from the most hated to the most loved. He talks about, uh, revision... Uh, revisionists trying to rewrite history... It changes legacy. As he continues to talk, uh, he is caught up by the theme of Rouge. He yells at MJF that he's back and has a big moment. Where's my big moment? He yells angrily. He tells MJF, when you mess with a bull, you get the horns. Um, MJF tells Rouge he didn't get most of that. He asks if the crowd heard Rouge. He says, um, when the mark of Tony Khan was running this place, it was a bad. It was bad enough, but now that. Uh, the elite are taking over. It's even worse. He tells Rouge, uh, Rouge, his suit is dry like every woman you ever slept with. He uh, says he's gonna, he's not gonna stand here and pretend like he doesn't know him. He brings up paying him in the past to take out Brian Danielson. Freeman he says Rouge, Rouge's dad had, was a legend, and some people might call him a uh, nepotism baby because of that, but not me. Not mean fans begin chanting, Nepo baby, Nepo baby. Freeman clips back, don't do that, don't do that. Um, with a smile on his face, he tells Rouge he's one of the best, but MJF isn't one of the best, he's the best. Um, he tells MJF he wants to let him know how he feels by Rouge cutting him off and, and rumbling him. Um, he says something insulting in Spanish and closes with, and I'm MJF and I'm better than you. And before he, tell, before he can tell Rouge, and you know he is met with an attack by Rouge, which uh, which he mainly answers back with one of his own. The two have an uh, incredibly wild brawl that dozens of officials and security try and break up. They do briefly, but then re collide and the whole pile of bodies falls down. As the brawl uh, reunites, they finally separate the two to end explosives, opening silent. Alright, first match coming out is AEW National Championship. Eliminator, uh, Orange Cassidy versus Kyle Riley versus Jake Lethal versus Ray Phoenix. Oh, does Leon know we are in my room? <laughs> because there's some going on wrong in the background on the other side of the apartment. Does Leon guys know? So, sorry about that. Um, so it's a little quiet right now in my room, so, um, if you're something in the background, don't worry. Um, so anyways, after this wraps up, as Cowboys has, a uh, Sets up a video package hyping tonight's main event, uh, which features the Undisputed Kingdom and Roger Strong challenging Swerve Strickland for for the AEW World Championship. 
the air package wraps up and then we return inside the blue arena where Orange Cassie's theme hits. Um, from there, the freshly squeezed one emerges to a big pop. Sells inside the square circle for our opening contest, which he, which we learn will be a four-way showdown with the winner advancing to challenge Will Ospreay for the AEW and National Championship next Wednesday night on AEW Diamond. Out next is Kyle Riley, followed by Jay Lito, who comes to the ring, accompanied by Sanjay Dunn and finally Ray Phoenix, who comes out with Alex Umbriantis by his side. The four are in the ring are ready to rock and roll, and the bell sounds official running. Uh, uh, the official running. Uh, Lito hits a big uh, Isaguri to knock O'Reilly out to the floor. Lito teases a dive to the floor but opts against it. Cassie returns to the ring and knocks Lito out to the floor. We see a standing double wrist block spot with Cassie and O'Reilly. And then Cassie starts doing his trademark hands in the free and the jean pocket sequence of events. Um, we see Lito uh, re-enter the mix and take out everyone standing. Uh, Phoenix comes back in the ring and now all four men are brawling in different spots. Excuse me, sorry. Um, in different uh, spots in the ring and I mean Phoenix and O'Reilly knock Cassie and Lito down, turn to each other and then land kicks to each other domes. At the same time, they both crash to the canvas like Rocky Bumbo and Apollo Creed and Rocky Two. On that note, as Kyber talks us into a mid-match commercial break, as this high-stakes opening contest continues when we turn from the break, we see a spot fest uh, tries to throw for as each guy in the belt hits their finisher at, at one after the other, only for Phoenix ultimately roll lethal to get the pin out of nowhere to earn the title shot against Osprey next week. Uh, Jimmy again. We're so winner and new number one contender uh, to AEW National Champion um, Championship Ray Phoenix. All right, we have a few. I mean, I mean, after a match thing right here. Um, once the match wraps up, we see Don Callis and Trent Breda come down to the ring wearing all black. They throw a chair in the ring, and a brawl breaks out with Cassidy uh, or Cassidy in the ring. In the end, Cassidy is left alone in the ring. Chris Stanley, Trent warns Cassie that Stanlander will knock his teeth out. She blasts him with a forearm shot that drops him. Willow Nightgear runs her off. Alright, we have a backstage coming up. Uh, we see the rival of for the learning uh, for the world champion, the learning champion, Chris Jericho, who pulls up with Big Bill and the bounty hunter. When Brian Keith Jericho is, is critical of the camera work by the cameraman, so he takes the camera. Uh, to show him how to improve his improve his his uh performance. Um, the happy go. As we 
shift gears and head to a mid-match commercial break. When we return, we see Briscoe take over and ultimately hit his top row froggy uh, bow to pick up the win and qualify for the TNT Championship ladder match at AW. Excuse me, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, AW and JPW for Bandora just before. Excuse me. So winner and qualifying for a TNT Championship ladder match, Mark Briscoe. All right, backstage, we see the scapegoat, Jack Perry Fox, clapping while uh, watching the monitor as Briscoe scores his victory. He talks about how the world has already chosen him, and he has already proven nothing can stop him, and he's willing to sacrifice more than anyone. He says no matter how many times Tony Khan tries to screw him, it's already destined. All right. We then cut to Renee Paquette, who is standing by with Samoa Joe and Hook, the latter of whom is eating a bag of chips. As always, up comes Tony Nese complaining about Hook's diet and how he's hanging around with a former champion like Joe. Hook uh, tries to lunge at him, but Joe stops him and tells him people like him already come at killers like us when they know nothing is going to happen. Joe says, based on the amount of security behind the camera, you can tell that Nice is well aware of the fact he tells um, who they'll get him and anyone like him back on their time. We head to another commercial break. We'll return uh, the super positive smiley uh, FTW champion, Tony Trent Chris Jericho's backstage with Big Bill and Baron Keith. Alright, so Jericho tries. Uh, giving some pointers to Daddy Magic and Matt Menard who was taking over for him on the AW Rampage commentary uh, team after Jericho revealed last week that he was stepping down from, uh, me, from the, the position to focus his TV time on AW Dynamite and AW Collision. Alright, back inside the arena they claim uh, claims the theme heads and how they come with Max Kasser Rapping only to be cut off by the elite on the big screen. The Young Bucks talk about how, as AW EVPs, they won't tolerate disrespectful comments from employees like Casher just made in his rap at, on their show, so we won't be hearing from the acclaimed tonight. They are forced to turn around and go back to the back. Man, I wanted to hear what they were trying to say. Man, it's so unfair. Anyways, so now we shoot backstage once again where AW World Champion. Um, AW World Champion Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana are standing by with Brent Paquette. Swerve starts off by taking a quick shot at MGF, who, who took w one at him. At the beginning of the show, he also addresses Audrey Strong ahead of their main event tonight and delivers a message to the uh, AEW EVPs, the Young Bucks. Alright, so it's champion. Next one is all right, champion, champion match announced. Excalibur hides the follow Monet contest with TBS Women's Champion Mercedes Monet Monet on social media. He announces a title versus title bout with Monet defending her TBS Women's title against NJPW Strong Women's Champion Stephanie back here at the upcoming AWN and NJPW for Ben Dort. Just look for PV. A video package hyping the champion versus champion showdown is shown. Alright, next match, finally, uh, uh, John Moxley and Brian Downs and Claudio, uh, John Moxley and Brian Downs and Claudio Castell and Will Yuta versus, uh, Volador uh, Jr., Magnus, Magnus, uh, Rugio and, shit, shit, damn, guys, I'm so sorry, back inside the arena, wild thing plays outcome, and out through the crowd, out, um, comes the Black Bull, Combat club for four men together together for a match for the first time in a quite a while. As the commentary team points out, John Moxley, Brian Danson, Claude Castle, and Will Yuta so inside the square circle, square circle for scheduled eight man tag team um, action in our next match of the evening. Um, their drinks tune dies down, and the theme for their po uh, position plays out comes the four man te uh, team CMLL group. Consisting of Volador Jr., Magnus Rudio, and as as a uh, Vince whatever who sells in the ring as a commentary uh, as commentators hype up the uh, multi-person ender promotional uh, match. All eight men are uh, stare down, stare each other down before they 
all start sludging, sludging at each other as the brawl uh, develops. The bounce wants to get started. All right, so when the dust settles and, and the smoke clears, when it's Brian Danielson versus for the BCC team and ruins CML, CML team who end up being the legal uh, two men left alone in the ring to mix it up in the early goings. Yuna tags in after Danson establishes the offensive lead. The CML team start to shift the offensive momentum in their favor after some big uh, spots for the, for the ring to the uh, floor of BCC uh, fights back into the lead uh, moments later and after each member hits a big spot, Danson leads the Colorado crowd in a yes, yes, yes chant. As Excalibur talks us into a mid-match commercial break, as this eight-man tag tail continues when turn, Yuta pulls off the pin for his team, giving them the victory in his first performance back in our six months. So yeah, where, where are Yuta's been? So winners are John Moxley, Brian Dance, and Cloudy Patsnoy, where are Yuta? Alright, we check in with the Learning Tree uh Chris Jericho and his crew giving some super positives at Carrie. We then see Daniel Garcia video package where he tells his life story with pictures detailing the car accident that saw him break both of his legs and almost resulted in him, in him never being able to walk again. From there, we should back say we see the claim marking the bugs while telling them they're going to have to run into them sooner or later. And they're not going to like it. After this, we shake gears and head to another commercial break. All right. Do, 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 do. We're returning. Scabbard says he understands there is another situation out of the outside of the offices of the AWVPs. The young bucks. Uh, we cut to their office and we see them approached by um, Christian Cage and the patriarchy. Cage tells them there's another one he can trust to to the right thing, it's the AWEVPs. He talks about carrying the this company on his shoulders for years and asks for another AEW World Championship shot. The Bucks say if it was up to them, they give them all the titles. You take, you take a belt, you take a belt. Um, they say they tried to do that for their friend Jack Perry, but Tony Khan stooge them out and play his power card they promised them they'll do something good for them and also ask them for their shoe sizes as they leave presum presumably to get them their new uh, re Reebok bumps and AW replica tile shoes good guys all right our next match is Soraya versus Marmite right, so we go from there we return inside the blue arena to a black and white camera shot we hear the famous sounds of Thunder Stormy Storm uh, theme music. Out comes the AEW World Champion, accompanied by her friend uh, Ryan May for our next schedule match of the evening. As May sells in the ring, Storm heads out his over for a special guest commentary. Storm then Dean cuts off, and the outcast theme plays, bringing out Soraya, Hardy Cameron, and Zack Knight. The trio head to the ring together where Soraya sells inside as the other two take their spots at ringside. Storm makes her way for makes her first comment on special guest commentary as Soraya uh, attacks May from behind before the bell sound the bell before the bell she goes to work on her with an early ambush attack and then the bell sounds to get this one official off and running. Um May immediately fights back hitting a fall away slam as Storm encourages her to smash her tits and and on commentary. <laughs> After some more bang for action, we see Soraya throw May into the ringside barricade on the floor. That's a mid match coach bail. Then we return, we see Soraya pull off the win. So, winner is Soraya. Alright, once the match wraps up, Soraya and Harry Cameron attack May and Storm until Mina uh, Shura, uh, Koa makes the save. She and Storm have a stare down until May grabs them and pulls them both head first into their chest uh, the same way Storm does to her <laughs> all the time in backstage interview statements. At graphic flashes on the big screen which they s they all see which announces and confirms Thomas Tony Storm for Mina Shirakoa for the AEW Women's World Championship at AEW 
and NJPW for Man Rover Transit 24. All right, uh, backstage. Um, after this wraps up, we shoot backstage where the where uh for the world champion the learning tree and Chris Drago is backstage with Big Bill and the bounty hunter Brian Keith. When they come across private parties, private party uh they offer them a helpful cherry positive tip, informing them that their part parties will be a bear uh for if they weren't private. He just says he just says they send invitation to people for their parties. They have some words and then Jericho says he's gonna help them get more TV time on Dynamite because uh he's inviting them to be his guests on TV time with the learning train. Uh Chris Jericho on next week's show. Thanks guys. Bye guys. He says <laughs> says a happy Jericho who is mocked by Zay Cassie and Mark Quinn after he walks off. We had to another commercial break. Uh, Brian, uh, Dan, uh, yeah, so I have another, uh, backstage segment coming up right now. When we return from the break, we see Brian Dance is talking directly into the camera. He says, tonight made him feel good to see a guy like Rio Yuta, uh, return and have a performance like, uh, like the one, uh, he did against Team Same Mouth tonight. The American Dragon brings up how he spoke about his, this being his last full-time year as a wrestler and said things haven't gone as planned. He had an opportunity at the AW World Championship, but the, but came up short. He had an opportunity against Will, Will Ospreay to win one of the best matches of all time, but came up short. Danielson says the straw is, that is breaking the camel's back is that he, uh, that he, Team AW, uh, lost to the elite and AW, um, I mean, in the anarchy in the arena at AW number nothing, twenty twenty four. He says that he says that he heard from Tony Khan that the winner of the twenty twenty four Owen Cup or in Hard Cup earned a an AW World Championship shot. At, he says he's entering the tourney and plans to end his final year on the note. All right, finally, uh, the main event time: AW World Championship. Uh, Swerve Strickland versus AEW. Uh, I mean, yeah, Swerve Strickland, who's the champion, versus Roger Strong. It's main event time back inside the arena. Uh, the blue uh, arena. We see the dapper dapper Justin Roberts standing in the ring, uh, looking as a dapper and ready to be a yapper as ever. He proceeds to handle the introductions for the champion and challenges for this. Our final match of this week's AEW Dynamite. <clears throat> With that said, Roger Strong's theme hits and he makes his way to the ring accompanied by fellow members of the Unspeaking Kingdom, Matt Damon and Mike Bennett. Theme for the former AEW National Champion, uh, dies down and then we hear the familiar sounds of the eight, of the theme for the champ. Uh, Chris Nadu is going to be always dan entertain Swerve, uh, dance to bring up the champ and then Swerve Strickland merges to a nice spot. From the love land crowd audience inside the blue arena, he sells inside the square circle and his music faces fades off. Um, Justin Roberts handles the final formal pre-match reintroductions for the for this championship contest, and then the bell sounds. Um, Swerve and Strong mainly get after it, with Swerve getting off to a good start as Nana uh, leads the fans in the Who's House slash Tours House call and response. Routine Damon and gets a distraction and uh, assists, allowing uh, Strong to take over. He hits a wild backbreaker on Swerve, who crashes spine um, first into the top turnbuckle in the corner on the floor. Outside of the ring, Swerve finds back into a competitive form from the floor, whipping Strong into the steel ring post with authority. After that, as Calvary took us into a mid match commercial break. Our final of the evening as our AEW World Championship main event continues. We return to see some more back for action, which includes a lot of attempted outside the interferences, only for Swerve to hit a, a house call for the win to retain. That sounds like she goes on. So, so winner and still AEW World Champion, Swerve Strickland. All right, man, it was like a lot of talking during the show and stuff. Man, so anyways, it was a good show, kind of funny. Because, you know, MGF is back and stuff, finally. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, um, hope you enjoyed this video. 
And if not, like, and subscribe, hit that bell button, or leave a comment or whatever. I don't, got, I don't care what you guys do. Whatever. But anyways, uh, that was it. And um, AW Rampage will be on its normal, we'll be back to our uh, normal time, which is, you know, where I'm at. It starts at 9 o'clock through 10 o'clock. So, yeah, so it's back to the where it's originally supposed to be and all that stuff. So, anyways, that was it. And I'll see you guys in the next video for Friday's Smackdown and AW Rampage, right? Laters.